Colorado law enforcement have a new tool in their toolbox to detain a person who is in crisis. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 31 Now. I'm Alex Rose. In a moment, we are going to go through some body camera footage out of Gunwood Springs to see what you're looking at on your screen, a bowler wrap, but used in a real life situation. Joining me now on the program is Glenwood Springs Police Chief Joseph Darris. Chief, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. Uh, before I get into that video, just could you, could you kind of explain what this technology is and how long you guys have been using it over in Glenwood Springs? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, this is basically a remote restraint device that we have here available to us in Glenwood Springs. And we brought this online uh, in the springtime here this last year. So we've had it online now about uh, six or seven months to assist our officers out in the field to really resolve situations in a, in a much more peaceful manner where, where the situation lends itself. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and uh, here is the beginning of body camera footage. Again, just before we get into this, a brief warning for you folks who are watching at home. This is a person in crisis, and so just keep that in mind. Some of this footage may be tough to hear or tough uh, to watch for some folks who, you know, have situations or family members that are that are close to these kind of situations. But again, here is the beginning of the body camera footage, and then the chief and I will break back in to kind of break down what we're looking at. Let's take a look. Hey, man, we talked earlier. What's up? Did you get a hold of the Hope Center? Hey, from Hey man, we don't want you to get in the car. Don't get in the car. You're not in any shape to drive, man. So Chief, I, I'm just curious uh, to get your take on this. You know, it, it seems to me just from covering the news across Colorado that police are starting to encounter more and more people in crisis. Are you experiencing the same things when you're talking to your law enforcement partners? Is this happening more frequently in your experience? Uh, without a doubt, we're absolutely running into or having uh, interactions with people who are in mental crisis or in mental distress on a much more frequent basis. Uh, certainly here where I'm at in Glenwood Springs and in my previous uh, life back in, in uh, California, we, we, it was prevalent. And many, many of our counters now are really dealing with people who are in a situation where they are off their medication, perhaps they're struggling, they, uh, they have uh, substance abuse or uh, illicit substances on board, and that is really clouding their judgment, and really creating a dangerous situation for them and for our officers. Yeah, and I know that this uh, video mentioned at the beginning that uh, he, we had an individual in this case who was going into traffic, putting himself and other motorists at risk too. Um, so I really appreciate that perspective. Let's go ahead and continue to play this cut of this body camera footage. Michael, come here, come, come talk to me, man. Michael, we don't want to have to detain you, but you, you got something going on and we need to help you. I don't. Yeah, you're losing it, man. You're running in traffic. No, not. Michael, if you don't stop, we're going to have to restrain you, okay? Lord, please stop. So stop, you're going to get restrained. Okay. Michael, last chance, you're going to get restrained. Okay. Bola, bola, bola. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and pause right there. Chief, what do you think went right in this situation? And uh, do you have any critiques for your officers? Is there anything they could have done even better in this case? No, we're, we're very, very proud of uh, the way the officers responded to this situation. Uh, it was consistent with their training. And this device performed exactly as it's been designed, really to be able for us to re uh, restrain somebody at a distance in this case. Um, get them into custody and get them to, in this case, a, med a medical facility for evaluation to get them the help that they need. Because here we're not seeing a criminal problem. We're seeing somebody who's really creating a situation, as you noted, uh, that's a dangerous situation for them running into traffic and for the unsuspecting motors that might be driving down the roadway. So here again, uh, there's really no need for us to use any higher level of force because the bowler wrap is designed to prevent that, that situation from escalating any further or we might need to use a, a police baton or a taser or something like that to get this person uh, safely restrained. Now, I appreciate that perspective. Uh, let's just go ahead and play the rest of this clip for folks. <laughs> Michael, stay calm. Yeah. It's going to be okay, but we need to get you some medical help. <gasps> it's okay, man. Just listen to my voice. Talk to me. We got an ambulance coming for you, buddy. That's what we're here for, okay? You're not in trouble. You're not in any trouble. We just don't want you to be hurt. Michael, my name is Ryan. I'm a paramedic. Can you talk to me, man? So, Michael, be calm, man. We're going to load you up and get you to the hospital, okay, pal? 
Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Are you guys going to need one of us in with you? Or are you good? I think we're, we're okay. okay. Kyle? Yes, sir. Nice work. Thanks. He closed in fast right after good the aiming. Vola went off. Decisive slowing you down a gentleman who decided to walk away. And so that wraps up the body camera footage, Chief. Um, I, you know, I understand that you have one of these bowler wraps on you. Do you mind just uh, showing us up close what that looks like? Yes, yeah, certainly. So it's a handheld device here that the officers carry with them at all times. And it comes with a, uh, an attachable cartridge that the officers insert into the device itself. And then as they're arming it, you'll find that there's a green, uh, a green laser here, as you can see on my hand, which helps the officer uh, acquire a targeting area. Because we want to be very careful about where we target individuals who are going to be the device so it doesn't cause any unintended injury. Here you saw it on the lower legs. Um, that's one area. Then the other, the other area would be up from the, uh, the elbows down to the wrist where we'd be able to safely restrain somebody's arms to prevent them from moving or accessing any dangerous weapons. You know, I know that law enforcement has a lot of tools in the toolbox. Do you think that this is a, a good substitute for a taser, for example, or is it more just kind of a situation by situation thing? Yeah, I wouldn't say that it would supplement, or excuse me, it would uh, substitute any of the, the tools that we have available to us. It really supplements the tools that we have. So this is on the lower end of the spectrum where uh, after we give voice commands, like you saw in the video, then we have this device available to us to use to restrain somebody early in the interaction so that we don't have to resort to those higher levels of, of force options that we do have, uh, whether that be a taser, a police baton, or certainly a firearm. And when we're dealing with people in mental crisis, if you look across the United States, the vast majority of officer-involved shootings typically involve uh, a subject who has been under the influence or who is suffering from mental crisis. So to the extent that we can really minimize those interactions uh, with a device such as the Bola Wrap, uh, all the better for us and for the individuals we're, we're contacting. You know, I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, what could go wrong in these situations? I, I'm just uh, thinking out loud here. The officer's aim is to be absolutely pivotal. pivotal. Because I can imagine if, if something like that goes around, uh, you know, somebody's neck, that's, that's got to be tough. So, so just what could go wrong in these situations and, and how much training do your officers go into to be able to use this stuff successfully? Well, with respect to the, the neck uh, observation there, there's, there's no pressure on this uh, Kevlar tether that you see being uh, expended downrange from the device itself. So if it were to... Uh, go around somebody's upper neck. There's no pressure, so there's no uh, pressure on the lateral vascular uh, or uh, area of the neck. So they, it's not like something that where they'd be rendered unconscious because there's no pressure that's compressing down on the neck itself. Um, the amount of training that you talk about, so they have initial training that they go through, which can be several hours of training, and that includes deploying the device on a static uh, mannequin or on their, their partners, their peers. And then following that, then they go through recurring training every single year to, just to make sure that uh, they're, they're still compliant with the policies and procedures that we have in place, and they're uh, effectively able to use the device as it's been designed. Well, I'm sure uh, recruits or cadets would much prefer to have this used on them than getting tased uh, as part of uh, the training and everything. Uh, I know that there are about 16 departments, including your own, across Colorado who are currently using this. Uh, just as we close here, Chief, any, any final thoughts or message to the public just about this new tool in the toolbox uh, for police to be able to detain a person in crisis? Uh, sure. You know, as we have more technology coming online, I, I don't want anyone to have the false sense of security that this is a magic bullet or it's going to solve every problem without us having to use higher levels of force because we typically respond to whatever a suspect presenting to us. So this is one more tool. Um, it is not a pain compliance tool. So when we do use this, there's no pain involved in taking somebody into custody. Much like you saw the gentleman that we interacted with there, he was wrapped around the ankles. It really restricted his mobility and gave us the opportunity to go in and take him into custody without any injury to him or to the officers. So there's no pain compliance, much like many of the other tools that we do have require pain to to achieve compliance and get them into custody. So we're very encouraged by this technology uh, that we have here available to us. And uh, we, we certainly hope that it provides us the opportunities to move forward. And, and when we do have to get into these situations that the, the resolve peacefully without, uh, again, any injury or risk to anybody either in the immediate area or to the person that we're dealing with directly. Wonderful. Again, Chief Joseph Darris joining us here on Fox 31 now to talk about the Bola wrap against 16 different departments across Colorado, including the Glenwood Springs Department, currently using this uh, as another tool in the toolbox to detain people in crisis. Chief, thank you so much for joining us on the program. It's, it's our pleasure. Thank you for having us.